We now present For the Record. A busy week at the state capitol. If you fire 188 Wisconsinites simply because they took a job and care about diverse populations, Robin Voss wins. As lawmakers put the finishing touches on the state budget. Spare dollars throughout the UW system that are going to be that are now being spent to divide people based on race and a single ideology. This weekend marks the anniversary of the Dobbs abortion decision and an exclusive sit down with the Madison School District interim superintendent. I've said all along, this is a really important year. Welcome to For the Record. I'm Will Keneally in Fort Naomi Coles. This Thursday saw the end of months worth of debate and negotiation with the legislature's powerful budget writing committee approving the final pieces of the next two-year budget, including funding for the University of Wisconsin system and implementing a significant income tax cut. And for an inside glimpse, we turned to one of the legislators on the committee to see how this all came together. And a quick note, we reached out to the Senate Republican leadership multiple times for an interview, but they haven't gotten back to us. Joining us now is the longest serving Senate Democrat on the committee, Senator Latanya Johnson of Milwaukee. And thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So I want to ask you, you've obviously been on this committee for a few years now. How does this budget season compare to previous years? Well, you know, this budget season, um, I thought was going to be a lot different because this time we had basically a $7 billion um, surplus. So in my opinion, this was an opportunity for us to do a lot more for the constituents of Wisconsin. It was an opportunity for us to make investments um, that we otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity to make. Um, instead, we made a cut where we should have made more investments. So that was a huge letdown for me. So I want to ask you, as this heads to the floor next week, uh, do you have a sense of whether you, other Senate Democrats, will support this final budget bill? You know, for me, um, supporting this bill will be exceptionally hard, especially with things like cuts to the UW system. We know how hard it is for employers to find workers right now, and we should be investing long term. We know that these um, shortages are only going to get worse by 2035. So we need to make those long term investments now. Um, the UW systems have really stepped up to the plate um, with investments like the tuition promise, um, allowing those students to go to school for free for with parents who make um, $62,000 or less. We know they have enough money to um, do that for the first year. And it was our opportunity to step up and to supply those funds for additional years. And we failed to meet that challenge. It was so many other things that we heard during the listening sessions that we failed to fund. And um, like, for example, childcare. Childcare was huge. We heard that from families and from employers, employers who wanted to see more people go into the workforce. And we know that childcare counts was ex exceptionally important because we are slotted to lose 87,000 childcare slots. And for a lot of those parents, that means that they're not gonna be able to go to work, 54% of Wisconsinites live in childcare deserts and they can't afford to lose the slots that they have. So it's going to be exceptionally hard for me to support this budget, um, knowing all of the inside information for those things that we didn't support that we should have. So there's a little bit of a cliche on the committee um, that a motion either fails or is approved uh, 12 to 4 along party lines. Uh, but we have seen throughout the process um, some 16-0 votes where everybody's on the same page. Um, kind of broadly, are there any Democratic wins in this budget? There, there are some wins. We saw some wins with the WIDA movements yesterday. Um, we had some 16 votes, um, and we wanted to see more of those. We know that there is a shortage in workforce housing, and we want to do more in housing, um, affordable housing, safe housing for Wisconsinites all across the state. We know that there is a need for that. And um, fortunately, um, our WIDA housing proposals, they rose to that occasion yesterday. And so now, broadly, with this budget process, it will head to the governor's desk uh, within a matter of weeks here. Um, if you're going to advise the governor, who can obviously use a line item veto on the budget, would you have any recommendations for him? You know, the governor is in a very different place from um, the job that I do. 
um, he was elected by an entire state versus a lot of the individuals who are in the positions of power in the majority, um, the Republicans that are in the position of power who are elected by a gerrymandered majority. But the governor knows and understands um, the situation that's at hand. And he knows exactly who he's dealing with because he deals with these individuals on an everyday basis. And he knows exactly how they play and they do not play fair. And um, it's exactly their way or the highway and they don't care who gets hurt in the process. And unfortunately for the city of Milwaukee that genuinely tends to be the largest city um, in the entire state of Wisconsin. Everyone seems to enjoy the Pfizer Forum, the Wisconsin Center District, and all of the luxuries that our city has to offer. We're number one in tourism dollars, but yet um, when it comes to getting our fair share of the revenue that we bring in, we're always last to see the return on those dollars, and that's unfortunate. Senator Johnson, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I'm sorry about the cameo from my kitten. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, rebuilding trust at the Madison School District, how the MMSD interim superintendent is navigating a tumultuous few weeks at the district and charting a new course forward.